I'm here today with the game Reef by Emerson Matsuki, who has designed several other games and, in fact, has some um, uh, games coming out soon, including the Metal Gear Solid game, if you're into that. But today we're going to be talking about Reef because it's summertime and I'm focusing on summertime related games right now. I think Reef is related to that theme because of the coral. So we'll take a look at how to play the game and then we'll go over my final thoughts on why I like it or don't, what I do or do not like about it. So let's go ahead and dive in, take a look at the game Reef, and then we'll come back at the end and talk about final thoughts. Here is Reef set up for a four player game. I do prefer this game as a three or four player game, but you can play it as two. I just think it plays better as a four player game. In our current example, we use all of the pieces, so we have those separated out. In a smaller game, you're not going to use all 28 pieces. You're going to set aside uh, four in the three player game so that you only use 24, and um, 10 in the two player game so that you only use 18. And we have our money separated out into ones, threes, and fives, and twenties, tens also. And then we have cards set up, and um, we have our deck of cards shuffled, and then three cards to the left of that, as well as our player boards. Our player boards doesn't matter which side we use. Um, everybody gets three coins to start the game. Everybody gets two cards after the deck has been shuffled. Um, these ones aren't in sleeves, but I'll be showing you ones that aren't in sleeves as we've looked at examples. I do think that sleeves are great for this game because you're going to be handling the cards a lot. You do want to make sure that you also leave a little bit of room on the side of your board to discard cards because you're going to be either uh, getting a card or playing a card. Then you do set up all four of your coral pieces in any way you like after the initial setup. If you don't want to use those four middle sections, you can set them up anywhere, including stacking them if everyone agrees to that type of setup. So now that we're ready to play, let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually play. So on your turn, you're always going to do one of two things. You're either going to take a card or play a card. Taking a card comes from the row or the stack. We'll talk about that in a minute. And remember, we're only doing one thing. So either uh, take a card or play a card. If you play a card from your hand, you're not going to get to take a card. So you're trying to do this balancing act. As you take a card, you are going to want to be aware of the symbols on the cards. So we'll grab those and look at those in just a second. But just remember that a card you want might not be there. And you have to be prepared for that as you play the game. So let's grab these cards, we'll take a look at them, and start to think about how to play the game. Here are the cards from the row. Every card has some things in common, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, the first is the coral that you're going to get when you get your turn. So you get those coral and you immediately have to place them. In this case, it's a purple and an orange. And then you have the symbol for how you're going to score points. And then you have the symbol for how many points that that is going to score you. So in this game, um, the points are both your currency and your final scoring points. In the case of this card, we see that it scores one point for every two um, tall coral that we have on the board. So we can place the coral out, we'd immediately score two points. So two times one would be uh, two points that I could score just getting that card and playing it. Or if I have a bunch of twos, then I could score even more from this card. It's a decent starting card. Um, that simple just means wow. So we're going to put those back down and take a look at some different cards. But before I do that, um, let's say I didn't want any of those cards that were in the row. I can place all those back down and then I take a look at the one that had the lowest value, in this case being that one there, and then I would take one from my personal supply, put it on the lowest value card in the row, like this, and then I would take the top card off hoping to get something else. Maybe I need some different coral or maybe I need something else that isn't shown on these cards in order to score. So the one goes there because the lowest value is on that card. And as you can see later on, somebody, if they pick up that card, then they get the one point. So I have revealed a new card that would go to my hand. This one is four points for every three uh, purple. And it only matters what color is on the top. So if I have several purples that are on the top of a stack, and those stacks are each three tall, then each one of those would score four. So first take my two orange. I have to put those out first. Then I would score my three purple. Let me 
make sure I get that in frame there. There we go. Okay, so for every three purple on top, it's only the top one that matters, I would get four points. So let's say I had three towers of purple that were uh, that tall, then I would get a total of 12 points. Pretty good card. All right, here's a different example of a card. This one is in the shape of a kind of LRV pattern with these yellows. So as long as I have um, the yellows on top, it doesn't matter how tall they are. Like one could be a one, one could be a two, one could be a three. After I put those two green corals down, as long as I have that for every time I have that specific pattern, even if it's upside down, whatever, then I'm gonna get four points. Uh, and that happens immediately. Now, it's important to remember that if I had like five yellow, I couldn't count um, the yellow in two different patterns. They would only count for one, but if I had six yellow and this pattern showed up twice, then I would be able to score eight points, which eight points is great. I would like that. So I'm gonna put that one back, take a different example. So here's our next example. This is when you see the plus sign come up. So our initial example was the three purple Let's look at that one again. So the three purple has to be exactly that tall in order to get the four points. But with uh, plus sign, so if there are plus sign next to it, then I can score differently. So with a plus sign here, the two plus yellow and the two plus orange, for every one like this catty corner or a diagonal that has that together, they can be two or taller on either one, orange or the yellow then I will get five points. So it could either be like that for a single one, or maybe let's say I had another one where they fit together, uh, diagonally from one another, then I could score another one in 10, which is even better than eight, which is great. Here's another really simple way to score some points. So in this case, it's for every orange, and that's why it's uh, saying count the oranges around your tallest green. So I might get a total of eight of these oranges around my tallest green. For every orange around that, I'm going to get it two points. So in this case, that would be a total, if I got every one of those, of 16 points. That's hard to do, but it would be fun. Now we've finished going over how to play the game. So the game ends when somebody uh, gets to end and one of the piles of coral runs out. You get to finish the current round. Everybody after the person who does that gets to take a turn. So if the first player runs out, great. Everybody else gets a turn. If not, then only the person after them gets to take a turn. Um, one thing that I always forget is that if you have any cards left in your hand, you can score those points for those patterns, but you only got to score them um, once. You don't get to score them multiple times like you normally would, but it does allow you to um, score those cards that you may have been storing up to score in a, score in a certain way. Also, the game could end if anybody uh, takes the last card in the deck, the game would end immediately. So once that's done, everybody compares highest scores. Uh, you're just adding up the scores that you have from your um, points, and then you have a winner. In the case of a tie, the tied player who has the most stacks of four corals wins. Uh, this game does have a limit of you can only have four cards at a time or four pieces of coral. Um, so there's nothing um, weird about this game, but just be aware that if any coral pieces run out, you only get to take what's left. Um, you don't get to add a pull from somewhere else. Um, there are lots of different cards. I like to sleeve my cards in this game, like I mentioned before. I think it's a fun, easy game to learn, uh, like most of uh, Emerson's games. I don't think this would matter for most people that much, but um, especially if you're playing with kids or somebody who's more of a rule stickler, it is worth pointing out that the supply of point, to point tokens does not run out. Uh, if you run out of tokens, use anything that you want as a substitute. At any point in the game, you can switch out your point tokens um, for different denominations so that you can keep those handy. And then finally, your point tokens are considered hidden knowledge. You don't have to make that public. Um, your discard pile is next to you, but you could stack your point tokens so that nobody can see what you have. And that's the game. All right, final thoughts with the game Ruth. Um, so some games you want to bling out and put nice components on. I could, I guess, see that if you really, really like Emerson Matsuki, but with this particular one, I don't think that you need to do that. The cardboard um, bits that come with the game are fine for the uh, ones, fives, threes, tens, and 
um, 20s, but um, I do really like the chunky plastic bits that come with the game so that you stack up your reef. I like that. There's just something fun about the tactile experience that you have when you're playing the game. Um, there were no print problems. I like the player boards. Um, not completely why they are sure why they are double sided, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, nothing wrong with them. A decent uh, production quality there. The cards, as you saw in the video, um, I went ahead and sleeved mine because they're a little bit thin, and we've played this game several several times. It's good, a good game for kids. Um, it's a nice filler for adults. Uh, Reef is something that I never feel bad about recommending. I think it's a decent buy. Um, I think that there's going to be a second edition coming. I'm looking forward to seeing what they put in the second edition. Maybe more cards, different uh, things that are going on. Maybe they're just reprinting it and trying to make it look a little bit different. That's fine too. Uh, either way, I think Reef is a solid choice for families and those looking for a nice filler with that marketplace uh, mechanic. It's easy, like uh, along the lines of like Century Spice or Splendor or something like that. So if those are your kind of thing, you enjoy those types of games or you need something like that in your collection, um, then I would recommend Reef. Thanks. We'll see you later.